I don't know what I said. Hey everyone, it's another day in the garage and this is less a project video and more a video about an upcoming project. And it's here. Look at the size of this car. This is a regular Miata and this is a 1952 Packard 300 sedan. This thing is huge. It is just a massive car. The hood on this car is about the same height as the top of a Miata. So this car, I couldn't resist. It is in original condition 1952, so 70 years old. And it only has, come on, it only has 84,000 miles on it. Uh, it's possible that this rolled over because it only has five digits, but probably not. So, all things considered, this car is in really really nice shape i think it's definitely gonna be oh, that's too dark it's definitely just gonna be a driver something fun to get going and cruise to shows in uh it's it's complete it's got all the chrome hubcaps bumpers and and such the only thing, and we'll look under the hood in a minute, is that, oh, this is dark. Hold on. Okay, that's better. The only thing is, this is the original head, and the previous owner discovered that it had a crack in the head, so it was leaking coolant um, slowly, but enough to do something about. So, they found this other head, uh, it's not a new head, but it's a replacement head, and it has been machined flat. Um, and this was going to be put on, but uh, they ran out of time and money and couldn't complete it. So really, uh, this car was a driver, was driving uh, several months ago before it was disassembled, and in theory just needs to be put back together and it can drive again. Uh, obviously, I'm going to go through the brakes. Uh, the tires look like they need to be replaced. A um, couple other things. Uh, just maintenance and mechanical-wise that I'm going to do. But uh, this should be a pretty reasonably quick project to get going down the road. Just to look at, at this. This head, oh, I can't even barely lift it, is... It's just a slab of steel. Ugh. I mean, it, it's incredible. There was no, there was no consideration for how much this might weigh, or doing trying to do any kind of weight optimization. It's just, it's just a huge slab of steel with a bunch of holes in it. Uh, I think that's incredible. Uh, here's the, this is kind of a combination intake and exhaust manifold. Um, so this, this will uh, just be a matter of putting back on. And then for an engine that big, it's got kind of a little carburetor, but uh, a little bit needs a little bit of cleaning but overall looks like it's in good shape so hopefully that doesn't give me too much trouble and then it didn't come with a filler neck uh, not a filler neck but a water a coolant outlet neck uh, I think actually the thermostat is supposed to to live in this originally but I'm gonna I'm gonna make an inline thermostat housing and I think that might be a cool lathe project so uh, I just think that would be fun, and then I'll just have to, 
I guess, cut this in half um, and put the thermostat in there. Hopefully this doesn't just unwind. But it didn't, the original uh, water neck here was stamped steel, so they just kind of, you know, after 70 years, they just crush and corrode and, and they're no good. This I took a chance on. Uh, it was an eBay listing and it was 10 bucks and it's cast and it happens to fit exactly on here. Uh, so that'll be perfect. The only thing is it doesn't have a spot for the thermostat as the original one did. So that's why I need to do an inline thermostat. But I have that, I have new radiator hoses. And uh, now let's go look under the hood. Look at this. It's, in it's just incredible how there was <laughs> so little consideration for weight or size. Uh, the cars were just massive. So here it is under the hood. This is a straight eight, 327 cubic inch, just beast of an engine. Uh, supposedly it has around 150 horsepower and maybe 240 foot pounds of torque. And it's just gotta be so heavy. It's just solid, solid all the way front to back. Uh, again, this it's just incredible. Um, this is a neat piece. Sorry, there's not enough light, but this is a uh, an automatic transmission fluid cooler. Um, so it's got two two lines that come from the transmission, run through here, and they run uh, the coolant comes out of the bottom of the radiator, cold and comes up through here into the water pump and so it cools the lines uh, before it goes into the engine. So I'll have to take this off and probably put an aftermarket cooler on here and just put it in front of the uh, radiator. But I thought that was a neat, neat thing. Um, for the HVAC, it's just full-blown duct work like you'd find in the back of your dryer. Uh, and then it, there's just a certain rawness about this engine. Here's the, uh, it's, it's supposed to be pointed straight down, but this is the positive crankcase pressure just dump, and it just exhausts right out, out the bottom. Uh, so that's just kind of fascinating, and it's interesting to see how far things have progressed as regulations and we've learned things and, and that sort of stuff. Uh, right now this has, I think it's 38 head studs and uh, it's missing five of them and one of the holes is currently stripped. So I'm debating, do I drill it out and tap it and then try to uh, put a, get a stud that has a larger thread on it for that one? And just continue with a stud or use a helicoil and get again get a stud um, or what I'm thinking about doing is taking out all of the studs except for maybe four of them to locate the head on here and then replacing them all with bolts uh, so if you know anything about this car and have an opinion on that uh, please leave a comment below another really cool thing about this car well interesting thing. Uh, I don't know how convenient it's going to be, but it, it runs on a six volt system. So there's a generator down there. It doesn't have a modern alternator, but it also is a positive ground car. So that, that means the chassis is the hot side and the wires are the negative side. So that could get you in some trouble probably if, if you're not ready for it. But, um, it, as far as I know, it hasn't been converted. When I get a battery, I'm going to cross my fingers and try to turn it over and hope that <laughs> I don't let the smoke out. Um, but other than that, this thing is just so cool. And it's so big. You can probably, you can barely fit it in the frame of the camera. 
and probably one of my favorite features on this car is this original this is the it has like a spotlight floodlight that's connected to the rear view mirror which is connected to this handle inside and so you can I, I have a feeling this is supposed to twist and rotate the light left to right. So this is up and down and twist would be left to right. It's it's not moving smoothly and I don't want to force it and break it. So I'm just leaving that as it is. But that's such a cool way to adjust the, the mirror and, and the spotlight. I think that's really cool. So that, I just think this is really neat. It was a bit before it's time maybe. It has a push button starter. I don't know if it works. Um, it looks like somebody might have gotten a little bit creative with the wiring. So um, I'll have to I'll have to play with that. It's also interesting you can put the key in, turn it to the on position, and then you can just pull it right back out. So uh, <laughs> that's just funny. It has a AM radio in the dashboard, and I have no idea if it works, but it's going to be a, oh, cool. It's just a neat decoration now, anyway. Uh, this is all, all chrome and just fascinating. And this is has what's called an ultramatic automatic transmission and normally cars are park reverse neutral drive three two one this car is park neutral high low and then reverses all the way at the end so that's a little bit different than conventional cars and i was reading the difference between high and low um, is basically low gear on a regular automatic transmission that's modern and then high gear is kind of the same but um, they don't switch between each other you kind of have to choose high gear for general driving around and low gear for um, like I don't know going down hills and, and that sort of stuff so it's uh, it's it's pretty pretty cool it's got all the pieces um, no seat belts. This was before seat belts. Tons of room in this car. Like I said, this was before space was ever a concern. And it's just got such a solid, solid sound. All the glass is pretty good, with the exception of this one crack. I think this is two pieces laminated to laminated together and it's the inside piece that has the crack so hopefully this doesn't give me give me any problems uh, so anyway this is just a video introduction to this new project uh, i hope to have it running sooner rather than later to move on to other projects because this kind of came in the middle of other things that i was doing but i just couldn't resist because it's just so neat um, so with that said, thanks so much for watching. Uh, hopefully you think this is cool. Comment if you want to see the progress uh, when I do any work to it, really, and see if I can get it started. Hit the like button if you like it. Hit the thumbs up, or thumbs up is the like button. Hit subscribe if you're not subscribed. Uh, I don't know what a normal video for me is anymore, so uh, I won't say one thing or another about that. But I just think this is so cool. So I'm going to try to take some uh, detailed little video clips of some various things front to back, and that's what's coming up now. So again, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.